Hello and welcome everyone to yet another tech enthusiastic video from Edureka. I am Ravi and today we'll be discussing about enumeration in Java. So without wasting much time, let us quickly take a peek on the agenda for today's discussion. Firstly, we shall discuss what exactly enumeration is and followed by that, we shall understand why we need enumeration in Java and next, we shall understand the differences between enum and class and to understand the topic in a much better way, we shall go through some practical examples and followed by that we shall discuss the major advantages of using enum and finally we shall wrap up the things with an interesting use case which is rock paper scissor game using enum in java now let us quickly begin with our first topic that is what is enum in java so the definition of enum is java enums are classes that have a fixed set of constants or variables that do not tend to change the enumeration in java is achieved using the keyword enum the Java enum constants are static and final implicitly. Now, this was the basic definition of enum. Now, let us move on to the next topic to understand what exactly enum is and why do we need it in Java programming. So, when we come into data types, we have two different types of data types, which are user defined data type and inbuilt data types. So, the basic inbuilt data types that we use in our day to day programming are int, float, double, char, and many more. Similarly, we also have user defined data types. So enum is one of them. So why we have user defined data types when we have inbuilt data types? Okay, the answer for this question is sometimes the inbuilt data types are not enough. Just assume that you have different data of different data types and you have to store all that data in one single variable. In that situation, the inbuilt data types might not be useful. For that reason, we have user defined data types. So enum is one of them. Now let us understand how does it exactly work. We shall consider our first example as the days of a week. Say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Now here we have all the seven days of a week and if we had to store all the seven days of a week into one single variable, then we might tend to use the data structure which is either an array or a list. But the drawback is the array and list are mutable. So during a different operation in a program, the data which is stored in an array might be variable. So in this case, we use enum. So we'll store all the seven days of a week into one single variable, which is week and the values stored in the variable week will be constant. Those will not be changed. Similarly, let us consider another example where you are the boss and you will be providing employment for different employees which is contract temporary and permanent. So if you had to code a program for appointing employees on the basis of contract temporary and permanent, then you might look for a code which is simple and small and efficient. So in this case, if you use enum and store all these three values into one single variable, which is job, then your code will be short, simple and efficient. So this is how enum works. Now to understand this enum in depth, we shall consider switch case. Firstly, we shall come up with a switch case code and you have the following code here where I've provided switch case as C and inside the switch case we have three different cases case one case two and case three. So we have some code segments in each of the case and we'll find for a match. So here is the problem with this code relationship between intellectuals one two three and executed code is not obvious. The next problem is if one of the above values example two becomes not supported anymore then this switch case is not updated accordingly and it will contain forever as the unused code and followed by this if new possible value for example 4 is introduced and the switch case is not updated accordingly then the code will probably throw an unsupported operation exception at runtime without the compile time notifications not only this we also have few more problems such as switch structure tends to be duplicated several times in the code that makes problems 2 and 3 even more complicated and finally the first simplest fix can be done by using int constants instead of literals. Let's define constants. So after a few changes, this is how the new code looks like. Obviously in real life, the names of the constant must be self descriptive. This snippet is more readable, but all other disadvantages are still relevant. The next attempt to improve this initial code snippet uses enums. Enums were introduced in Java from the version 5 in the year 2004. Let's define the following enum. And now the code will be slightly changed. As you can see, this is how the new code looks like with enum. 
this code is a little bit better and it will produce compile time error if one of the elements is been removed from enum action. However, it will not cause any compilation error if an additional element is added to enum action. In some IDEs or static code analysis tools may produce warnings in this case, but who is paying attention to warnings? Fortunately, enum can declare abstract method and that has to be implemented by each and every element. Now, the switch case statement can be replaced in single line. This solution does not have any of the disadvantages enumerated above. Followed by this, first advantage is it is readable. The method is attached to enum element. One can write as many Java docs as needed if any method is unclear. The second advantage is the code that calls method is trivial. What can be simpler than method invocation? Followed by that, there is no way to remove enum constant without removing the implementation. So, no unused code will remain if some functionality is no longer relevant. Followed by that, new enum element cannot be added without the implementation of method action. Code without implementation can't be compiled. If several actions are required, they all can be implemented in enum. As I have already mentioned, the code that calls specific function is trivial. So now, there is no code duplication. And finally, we can conclude that although switch structure is well known and widely used in various programming languages, its usage may cause a lot of problems. Solution that uses Java enums and described above does not have these disadvantages. So now with this, let us move on to our next topic which is the differences between class and enum. So basically, the first difference between class and enum is class constants can be overridden while the enum constants cannot be overridden. Followed by that, the next difference is classes support the creation of objects where on the other hand, Java enum cannot support the creation of new objects. The next difference is Classes are capable to extend other classes, but enum cannot extend other classes, but it can implement other interfaces. Similarly, classes. Here, classes can implement an interface, and same goes with enum. Enum can also implement interface. So here, both classes and enums have the upper hand. With this, let us move on to our next topic where we shall discuss the syntax for enum. So the following code is the syntax for enum here enum being the keyword and edureka is the name of the variable and inside which we are going to store the constants. So now let us move on to the practical examples to understand Java enums in a much better way. So the first practical example that we are going to consider is how to define enum in Java. So our first example will be related to bikes where we'll learn how to define an enum in Java. As you can see here, I have declared a new package by the name definition and followed by that I have declared my first enum which is bike and this bike variable is storing three different values which is Bajaj, KTM and Yamaha. So all these three values which are stored in this variable bike will be constant and will not be changed. But you can also add in some new values into your enum which will not create much difference. But if you try to remove any values, then you might have a compilation error. Now, let us execute this program and see how does it work. As you can see, in my main class, which is edureka, I am trying to access one particular data from my enum, which happens to be Yamaha. Now, here you have the data which has been accessed and print in the terminal here. With this, let us move on to our next example, which happens to be enum in switch case. Now, let us try to use enum in switch case and see its functionality. This is the example that we have discussed earlier where we shall be using one particular enum and we'll be providing a variable as day and inside the enum day we are having and inside the enum variable day we have all the seven days of a week which are Sunday to Saturday. Now inside my main class edureka, I am trying to access one particular day and along with that I'll be printing a message. For example, here you can see Monday. Hi, today is Monday and similarly the last one which happens to be Sunday and along with Sunday I have a message hi today is a holiday and finally we have a default method where if the input given does not match with any of the cases then it will print out a default message please enter a valid day. Now let us execute this program and see how does it work. As you can see I have provided the day as Monday so the first case got a match and the message along with that which happens to be hi today is Monday has been printed here. Now with this let us move on to the next example. The next one happens to be inheritance in Java. Now we shall understand how does an enum inherits another class. 
Here, this particular example is based on inheritance related to enums in Java. Here, I'll be describing three different manufacturers which happen to be Google, Huawei, and Apple. So, I'll be trying to inherit the OS for all these manufacturers. You know that Google uses Android 1 and Huawei uses Hongming OS and finally Apple uses iOS. Now let us try to implement inheritance in this particular class and try to provide the OS for all the manufacturers. Now let us select Google Pixel and try to inherit the OS related to Google Pixel. As you can see I have successfully selected the phone as Google Pixel and I have inherited the OS for the same which happens to be Android 1. Now with this, let us move on to the next example related to enums, which is enum with customized values. Now let us try to execute enum with customized values to understand this in a better way. So this particular example is based on enum with customized values. As you can see, I have customized the values of enum as traffic signals, which means red as stop, green as go, and orange to be wait. Now inside my main class, I'll be trying to access the data which is present in enum and provide the information related to the values stored in my enum. Now let us try to execute this program and see how does it work. As you can see, I have successfully accessed the, all the data present in my enum and I provided the meaning of the values stored in my enum as red action to stop, green action to go, and orange action to wait. Now with this, let us move on to our next example, enum with if else. We can also use enum in if else classes. So to understand the functionality, let us execute one example based on this. So this particular example is based on if else statements with enum. Here, I'll be trying to travel to one particular direction. So in my enum, we have four directions which are east, west, north, and south. So according to the input I give from the main program, my enum decides to which particular direction I'm moving to. Now let us execute this program and see how does it work. As you can see the program has been successfully executed and the output says that I'm moving towards north direction. With this let us execute our next example that happens to be enum methods. So mainly enum has three different methods which are value, values of and ordinal. Now let us execute all these three methods and understand the functionality. Now first we shall execute values method. When you create an enum, the Java compiler internally adds a values method. This method returns an array containing all the values of the enum. Now, let us consider the following example, which has the following values, which are red, green, and blue. Now, let us execute this program and understand the functionality of values method. As you can see, the program has been executed successfully and the data has been written from values method in form of an array which says that the value red is in the index 0 and the value green is in the index 1 and the value blue is in the index 2. Now, with this let us execute our next method which happens to be values of method. This method is used to return the enumeration constant whose value is equal to the string passed as an argument while calling this method. Now here, this example is based on values of method. You can see that I have given the values of my enum mobile as Samsung, Apple, and Google. Along with the elements, I have also provided the cost tax of all the mobiles. As you can see, the value of Samsung phone is $1,099, followed by that Apple has $1,250, and finally, Google has $1,325. Now, from the main method, I'll be passing one value to my enum, which happens to be Samsung. Now, what my program does is, it will enter into enum and it will access the cost details of the phone Samsung and it will display on the terminal. Now, let us execute this program. You can see, I have selected my input as Samsung and the cost of all the phones is been displayed here and the cost of Samsung is $1,099. Now with this, let us execute the last method of enums which happens to be ordinal method. The Java interpreter adds the ordinal method internally when it creates an enum. The ordinal method returns the index of the enum value. This is completely similar to the values method, yet we shall execute one more example to understand this. So this particular example is based on ordinal method and here I've defined two different enums. The first enum happens to be fruits and the second enum happens to be vegetables. So both these enums have different values stored in them and from my main method, I'll be trying to access all the elements present in the first enum, which is fruits. And after that, I'll be trying to detect the position of apple present in the first enum, which is fruits. 
Now let us execute this program and see how does it work. As you can see the program has been successfully executed and the elements index values are also been displayed. You can see that the index value of apple is 0 followed by that banana 1, cherry 2, date 3 and berry at 4. You can see that cherry comes after apple. You can see that apple stays in the first position and cherry is displayed after apple has been displayed first. Now with this let us move on to our next topic which happens to be advantages of enum. So we have many advantages when we use enum in programming, but let us consider the major advantages we have. Firstly, enum in Java improves type safety. The next one, enum is easily usable in switch cases. Then enum can be easily traversed. Followed by that, enum has fields, methods as well as constructors. And the last one, enum can implement interfaces. With this, let us come into our last topic, the use case. The rock paper scissors game using enum. So this particular program is based on our today's use case and the enum we are going to use is hand sign. So the hand signs that we have loaded for the use case are scissor, paper and stone. Followed by that we have SPS main class inside which we have provided if else cases along with while loops which will decide the hand signs which we provide. Along with that the computer will play with us and decide who is the winner. The choices of the computer will be random and the choices of both the players will be evaluated and the winner will be declared. Now let us execute this use case to understand how it works. As you can see the program has been executed and now the interpreter is asking us to input a choice. S for Caesar, P for paper and T for stone. Now let me input P for paper. As you can see the computer has thrown Caesar and now it says I'm the winner. Now let us get another trial. Now let me insert S. As you can see the computer has also provided scissor and it is a tie. Now let us go for another play. This time I'll input T for stone. We have another tie. Now let's play stone again. And finally we have a win here. I chose paper and the computer chose stone and over stone paper wins. So with this we come to an end of this session and if you have any queries related to this session and if you require the codes for the examples I executed during this session you can write down in the comment section below and we will respond to you as soon as possible. Till then thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!